Hi everyone and welcome to another Tips and Tricks with Chloe. Today we will be going through garment fit maps. I will walk you through all the different processes on how to understand and read your fit maps as well as how to conduct a workflow using fit maps to ensure you have the best fitted garment possible. So let's begin. When it comes to garment fitting, most of your work is done within the 3D window. You use the garment fit maps which are allocated in the 3D toggle bar to help you do so. The four main fit maps are the stress map, the strain map, fit map, and lastly pressure points. Each map is used to give you a different preview of your fitting. Here is an overview of what the fit maps look like and I will now show you how to read and understand each one. Some tips to share with you before we dive into fit maps. By hovering over one of the fit maps, you will get a preview of the fit map name alongside the shortcut. For example, stress map is Alt 6. You can preview the fit maps individually. Unfortunately, they cannot all be previewed together. However, with a fit map, you are able to also preview the pressure points at the same time. The first garment fit map that I will go through will be the stress map. The stress map shows the external stress causing the garment to distort. As a result, the garment itself is exerting pressure, stress. In other words, the stress map is showing how much pressure is in the fabric per section, which is resulting from a tight fitting garment. Kilopascal, also known as KPA, is a pressure unit that describes the tear resistance. The maximum stress the material can withstand is represented as a unit, KPA, of pressure when it's stretched before the fabric rips. The stress map itself appears in eight colors, with blue indicating zero stress, while red indicates the strongest stress. By selecting any part of your pattern, you will also get the measurement of that KPA on a particular point. As you can see, the KPA can be represented above 100. Now let's explore this theory a little bit more with the example on our screen. On our screen, we have the same garment in different sizes, worn on two different avatars also varied in sizes. The only difference between these two styles is the fabric. The garment on the left is using the silk knit jersey, whereas the garment on the right is using the nylon stretch. The physical properties of the silk knit jersey allows more stretch in the garment to sit on the avatar without distorting. Whereas the nylon stretch fabric has some stretch, but is still showing extreme points of distortion. Now, let's see how these garments would perform if they were using the alternate fabric. I will select my pattern pieces and assign the other fabric to it. In order to see the changes on the fit maps in the 3D window, I must simulate in between every fabric change. By applying and swapping around the fabrics, I can see that it's not the garment causing the stress, but the fabric itself. Now, this isn't necessarily a problem if I'm working on a compression garment, such as a sports running outfit or maybe lingerie because here I actually want to see my fabric adding compression in certain areas to ensure a tight fitting garment where it will support the wearer. We can explore this a little bit further in our next map. The next map is the strain map. The strain map shows the external stress causing the garment to distort. As a result, the garment itself is being stretched. The strain map measures how far it is being stretched to its capacity. In other words, how much is the garment being stretched when worn? The strain map also appears in eight colors, with blue indicating no distortion rate at around 100%, whereas red indicates 120% and maximum distortion. The numbers in between are also expressed in a gradation of colors. By clicking on the point of the garment, you will also get the percentage of distortion at that exact position. Now, when comparing the strain map on the two garments, I can see that both garments are tight fitting, causing a lot of strain. As you can see, the garment on the right, which is using the silk knit jersey, which showed no distortion in the stress map, is now showing a lot of distortion in the strain map. Again, depending on your product category, this may not be a problem if you want compression and support on your garment. However, 
By looking at this garment, I can see that I might need to make some pattern amendments to the underarm and sleeve, as well as around the neck to ensure that the wearer isn't restricted. The next map is the fit map. The fit map shows how each fabric has a maximum distortion. The value of each distortion is determined by the stretch, shin, and stiffness of the physical properties within the fabric. The physical properties of the fabric can be found once you select the fabric within the object browser and scroll a bit further down to physical properties. Here, under detail, you will see all the measurements that build up your fabric based on the stretch, bending, and buckling of your fabric. The value of the fit map is a percentage of how much the fabric has been stretched relative to its maximum distortion. 100% the fabric is being stretched to its maximum distortion. 0% the fabric is not stretched. This is also indicated in colour, with red representing can't wear, which indicates more than 100%, whereas yellow, representing tight fitting, is usually more than 80%. Anything below 80% is indicated in white. The table here in the top right corner indicates in percentage of the total garment that has can't wear versus tight fitting spots across the whole garment. The fit map is only calculated in areas where the fabric and the avatar are in direct contact. Again, by clicking on any point of the garment, you will get the exact level percentage relative to the spot that you click on. The last option under garment fit maps is show pressure point. By showing the pressure points, you can see the exact points of contact between the garment and the avatar. Therefore, if I want everything to be next to skin, I want to be seeing a completely blue garment. If I want to see anything floaty and flowy, I would ideally not see any blue points. Now let's explore the garment fit properties a little bit further. In order to understand how the garment fit properties work, we need to go to the main toolbar to preferences and garment fit properties. From here, the garment fit property window will appear, and now we can change the range, unit, and appearance of our garment fit maps. Let's explore the garment fit properties a little bit further. The first option is type. As you can see, you can filter between stress, strain, and fit maps. The second option is the range color counts. The range color counts sets the number of colors to indicate the stress and strain map. This is not available for fit map. The first option within the chart is range. The range shows you the stress, strain and fit map range based on the number of colours from the range colour count. The next option is units. For stress map, you can filter between the three units of your choice. However, the strain and fit map are only shown in percentage. The next option is the colour. You can choose and filter between which colours you would like to see to represent each range. By selecting a new colour, you can apply that to the range. The next option is opacity. You can choose how opaque you would like to see your garment fit map. Moving on from the charts, we can go down to graph type. The first option is to see the difference between the gradation of the mesh and the colour compared to seeing it in a full section. You can also filter between seeing the mesh either as a face in which the whole map is filled in or you can choose to see the colour in points. You can then choose which areas of your 3D garment you would like to see, whether it's the weft warp or shear. Once you have made any changes, if you would like to reset back to the default settings that Clo offers, you can click on reset here. When working with the garment fit properties, you should also take into consideration the fabric properties you are using the garment fit maps with. Lower the percentage value for very stretchy fabrics. This way you can see smaller areas of stretch and then you should raise the percentage value for non-stretchy fabrics. You can adjust the stress, strain and fit maps according to your fabric. As an example, I will raise the percentage value for this non-stretch fabric here.
as you can see from raising the percentage value for, for all the stress, strain and fit maps, I'm getting a better indication on the fit of my fabric compared to the garment. Now let's explore the option the other way around. When working with very stretchy fabrics, I need to actually lower the KPA. As you can see, by lowering the percentage value, I am seeing more points of stress and strain, which is giving me more of an accurate fit map. Now let's move on to applying these theories into a workflow. Before jumping into your virtual fitting, you need to have all the correct components to ensure an accurate fit, starting with the fabric. In best practices, you will have the same digital fabric as your real fabric. In order to do this, you will need to measure your real fabric using the Clo Fabric Kit. The Fabric Kit measures the stretch, bending, buckling and weight of your fabric based on the warp, weft and bias. For stretchy fabrics, you will need to take a range of stretch test distances. You can then put all this information into the Clo emulator to create your digital fabric. You can then apply the fabrics that you're going to use. Next, you need to ensure your avatar is the right size, the same way you would fit your garment on the correct fit model. You can adjust your avatar size by using the avatar editor found in the main toolbar. From here, you can type in all the measurements of your size spec to meet your fit model's measurements. If you were using a 3D scan of your model, you can also bring that OBJ into Clo and use the auto convert to avatar to rig your avatar. By doing this, you will be able to use Clo features such as x-ray joints. After this, you can bring in any additional garments that you would like to fit with. Ensure you place every garment on the correct layer that you like. Once you have done layering, ensure that all your layers are back to zero. To assist in the fitting of your garment, you sometimes need to adjust the position of the garment either by turning on simulation and pulling the garment accordingly, or by using the avatar tapes found in the 3D toolbar. Before using these, I'm going to ensure that I have all my correct drawing lines turned on. From here, I will use the basic tape measure to draw a line where I would like my shoulder seam to be placed. To do this, I click once where I want to start and double click where I want to finish. From here, I can select the attach to measure tape, select the seam line that I would like to attach to this newly drawn line. I click once for the seam line and once for the tape. From here, I need to simulate in order to see the changes. As you can see, my shoulder seam has now adjusted to the correct position. I will repeat the same for any other seam lines that I would like to adjust. At this point, you can change the pose of your avatar by using the pose folder within the avatars folder. You can simply double click to use a pre-made one given to you by Clo, or you can actually use the x-ray joints found in the 3D toggle bar. From here, you can turn on your IK joints and manipulate the avatar into the position of your choice. Make sure you turn on simulation when adjusting the IK joints. This way, the garment will move at the same time as the avatar. Lastly, you need to ensure you're in a high-res garment to ensure an accurate fit. You can do so by using the high-res garment tool found in the 3D toolbar. Under simulation quality, you would ideally use fit and accuracy as your simulation property. Always ensure you simulate between every fabric or pattern change. As my fabrics have a slight level of stretch, I think it's necessary to adjust my garment fit map properties to ensure I have an accurate fit. In order to do this, I will go to preferences, garment fit properties, and raise the percentage value of both the stress, strain and fit maps to ensure I have an accurate fit. Now that I have adjusted my garment parameters, I can do an accurate fitting on my garment. I will first start with the stress map. Since I have changed the stress garment fit properties, I can now see that there is little to no distortion on my fabric. There's a slight amount of distortion around the crotch area, but this could be due to the pose that my avatar is currently in. I will change my pose in a short while just to check. I will now review the stress map next to the strain map. 
When changing to the strain map, I can see that there is a lot of red which is showing some level of distortion. However, when clicking on actual points on my garment, I can see that my percentage rate is actually below my maximum distortion of 130. Therefore, I am not so worried about the actual fit of the garment. When I compare the strain map with the stress map, I can see that there is zero to little distortion when using this fabric with these patterns. But just to confirm this, I will check this with the fit map. Now, when looking at the fit map, I can see that there are some points of can't wear around the waist and around the upper thigh. However, this percentage is relatively small, only at 7.4%. And this 7.4% is only representative of any part of the garment that actually comes into contact with the avatar. Therefore, around the bust, you won't actually get the percentage. So the 7.4% is actually quite small. The only point of concern I might have at the moment is around the thigh. However, when comparing to the other thigh, I can see that there is absolutely no stress or strain there. Therefore, I will consider reviewing this again when I adjust my avatar into a new pose. Using the poses in the library, I will adjust my avatar into a new pose. For people with particularly slow hardware, you might want to consider going into low resolution in order to change your pose a bit more quickly. You can then go back into high resolution in order to do an accurate fitting. Now that I have changed the pose of my avatar, I can see that my can't wear percentage has dropped down to 3%, showing that overall this is a garment that is suitable with the fabric that I have chosen. If I just double check this with my other fit maps, such as the strain map and the stress map, I can see that there is zero to little distortion anymore, especially in areas that I was worried about, such as the thigh and waist. Now that I have finished all the parameters and setting of my garment fit maps, I might want to share the outcome with my team, especially if I cannot do a virtual fitting or live fitting with my team. In order to do so, I will use snapshots. To find my snapshots, I will go to File, Snapshot, 3D Window. From here, I can create snapshots of my 3D window. When using snapshots, I can do single view or multi view. With multi view, I can choose to do either a custom view by zooming into particular points and taking a snapshot using the camera here, or I can use one of the default views, either front, three quarter left, or back like so. I can set the parameters of my image size using either a preset or defining the width and height I would like. I can raise the resolution if I want to, however, this is just a snapshot of your 3D window, therefore you will not get a high quality render. You can choose as well how many view counts you would like to do. I'm currently using four, however, you can do up to 10. You can also choose to save it with a transparent background, either as separate images, and if you have colorways, you can also choose to do that. Once you are happy with your preview, you can press save. Your file will then save in your folder, and from here you can open up the PNG to get a preview of your garment fit maps. You can repeat the same for all your other garment fit maps, such as stress and fit map. Thank you for watching this tips and tricks on garment fit maps. I hope you now understand how to use garment fitting with Inclo. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for further tips and tricks.